Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Exploring Our Future Alternatives virtual assembly. Uh, I'm Jim Eisenhower, uh, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, and I want to thank you for your participation in this event this evening. We've been working on the comprehensive plan for several months, uh, um, actually longer than that. <laughs> it's a very long, complex, involved process. But the key to our comprehensive plan is, has always been and will be citizen input. This is your opportunity as citizens to tell us what you want our county to look like in 20 or 25 years uh, down the road. We've been beneficiaries of uh, uh, prudent planning in the past. People have uh, uh, given us uh, their input and we've had a comprehensive plan that we've used to guide the development of the county. So tonight you're going to be looking at some alternative uh, scenarios that uh, have been developed based upon the input we've had before. And that input started with a, a citizen survey that we were uh, conducted of over a thousand citizens in, in the county. And that gave us very good feedback about what folks thought was important. Things they liked about the community, things they didn't like about the community, the quality of life, and things that we would want to preserve, things we would want to change. We followed that up with a, another event where we had 400 people come talk to us about some of the scenarios and some of the things that they thought needed to be looked at in the comprehensive plan. It was an opportunity for our citizens to give us feedback on how well the past comprehensive plans have been working and to help uh, determine changes that we might need in the future. So now we're down to the point where we have these scenarios that we would like to examine. And we do again need citizen feedback. We would ask that you participate. We would ask that you fill out the questionnaire at the end of the, of the meeting. We would ask that you involve your fellow citizens in the process, because the more people we have involved in the process, the better it will be for our community. We are at a critical juncture in the development of the county. We're approaching uh, build out. Uh, when I came here, <laughs> we had about uh, 25,000 people, and we're now about 75,000 people. So we're getting bigger, and how we maintain the quality of life of a community as it grows is really critical in this comprehensive plan. Therefore, your input on how we do that is absolutely essential. Thank you for participating, and we look forward to talking to you later this evening. Good evening, and thank you for joining our virtual assembly. I'm Tammy Rosario, Assistant Director of Community Development for James City County. I'm pleased to be joined this evening by Leanne King from Clarion Associates and Vlad Gavrilovich from EPRPC, who will present tonight's information and help answer your questions. We also have Alex Baruch from James City County, who will serve as the moderator for the question and answer periods. As Mr. Eisenhower noted, the key to our comprehensive plan update is your input. We wish we could be engaging with you in person as we enjoy doing with many of you during the summit in the future in November. But we are grateful that technology will allow us to connect with you in an alternative way, one that is safe and accessible, but also informative and interactive. Tonight, as our agenda shows, we have six segments planned. First, Leanne and I will spend some time updating you on our project. Then Vlad will share information on the exciting work we've been doing evaluating future alternatives for the county by testing different scenarios. We'll pause briefly to answer your questions. Next, Leanne will tell you how we're updating our comprehensive plan goals using your input. We'll pause again for a few of your questions and then she will spend some time providing instructions on how to provide your input through our questionnaires. We'll conclude with a final question and answer session before leaving you with information and links to the questionnaires. You can submit your questions anytime throughout Facebook Live by email at planning at jamescitycountyva.gov or by phone at 757-253 6750. Although we'll only be able to access Facebook Live questions for this evening's broadcast, we will be posting answers to all questions from all the different sources on our website in the coming days. For those of you who are new to the Engage 2045 process, you may be wondering what exactly is 2045, Engage 2045? On one level, it is a direct way for us to engage with you. Some key items that the community participation team would like you to know about the process. This is the critical opportunity to shape our community's future 
and drive real action. The Engage 2045 process will focus on educating residents and eliciting their opinions about critical community questions. Our county leaders are listening and want to hear from you throughout this process. All opinions and ideas will be considered and policy direction will be informed by community support generated through this process. On another level, Engage 2045 is the process to update James City County's comprehensive plan. You may be asking yourself, what is a comprehensive plan? The comprehensive plan is the highest expression of the community's future aspirations. It provides a vision for the community. It is also a blueprint for the community's long-range planning and provides goals to achieve in the future. It is a compass that guides decision making by elected officials and staff and sets out policies to guide this decision making. It is a playbook for capital investments and community initiatives through the strategic plan. The comprehensive plan includes actions to guide implementation. Finally, it is a messaging tool that articulates the community's visions and brands these ideas. I'll now turn it over to Leanne. Thanks, Tammy. Glad to be here with you tonight. Um, welcome everyone who's watching from home. The Engage 2045 process is a five phase planning process with four critical opportunities for community engagement. This process began in the summer of 2019, just about a year ago, and will continue through 2021. The first key round of public engagement, listening and envisioning was conducted last November and December. And we're currently in the second round of engagement, kicking that off tonight. Um, and this builds upon the outcomes of the first round. The second round, entitled Exploring and Testing, focuses on evaluating alternative futures for the county and evaluating how the cur county's current comprehensive plan goals should be amended to better reflect community guidance. We'll talk a little bit about phase one, listening and envisioning. So this first round of engagement was conducted through a summit on the future and corresponding online activities. The live summit engaged participants located at six sites in the community and folks that watched the simulcast from home on November 18th of last year. For those that couldn't attend the summit or attended remotely, on, uh, online options were provided to participate in several different activities aimed at identifying the community's critical priorities for the planning effort. And all of this kind of is we're building on tonight. A few quick facts for the listening and envisioning phase. Uh, 185 live polling participants participated and we had 256 online polling participants for a total of 441 total summit participants. That's in addition to the over 1,000 respondents that participated in the 2019 citizen survey. So those are our kind of key inputs that we've used to, to come to where we are today. So the Engage 2045 citizen participation team reviewed the results of the summit and the online activities and the 2019 citizen survey and identified five key planning priorities. The community input showed that residents highly value the natural environment, community character, support affordable housing and economic development efforts, and want to enhance the quality of life in James City County. There's a close connection between these five Engage 2045 priorities and the goals of the currently adopted towards 2035 comprehensive plan. As you can see here, the first four goals of the comprehensive plan relate very directly to input priorities on nature, community character, affordable housing, and economic development. The remaining three comprehensive plan goals relate to overall quality of life, which was a major priority we heard from the public. And of course, the land use goal touches on all the public input priorities as the quality and location of development affects all of the inputs. Overall, there appears to be a strong continuity of public interests and concerns over the years from the prior comprehensive plan process to today. 
To build on these public input priorities, the alternative futures phase has developed a potential scenario for James City County's future focused on accomplishing these priorities. And Vlad will, will give you more information on that this evening. So tonight we'll share with you information about the two planning scenarios and the comprehensive plan goals, both of which you'll have a chance to evaluate through online questionnaires. A video of this virtual webinar that we're connecting right now will be, will be available on the project website, as well as the Q&A discussions. Uh, we'll have a written um, document that will document those, um, those inputs so that folks that can't attend tonight can still benefit from those discussions. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Vlad to discuss the future alternative scenarios for James City County. Thank you, Leanne, and good evening, everyone. I'd like everyone to imagine that it's the year 2045, and you're sitting with your morning coffee, and you open up your digital newspaper or device, and you see a headline, and that headline says, today, James City County is. And that's what tonight is about. We're going to explore alternate futures, not necessarily what will happen, but what could happen in 25 years in the county. So how do we explore alternate futures for the county? Well, one way to do this is by creating scenarios, pictures of different types of future that we can then test with computer models. Over the past few months, the county planning team has been busy building these computer models and alternate scenarios to share with you tonight. We'll share these scenarios with you. We'll look at their possible impacts. And we'll ask you what you think of these impacts. And your input tonight and on online surveys will help us build a plan for the future of the county. So first of all, what is scenario planning? A scenario is a way of looking at the future and trying it out and looking at potential impacts. It's a way of dealing with this cloud of uncertainty of what the future could hold and looking at all the different variables, organizing them into two, two or three realistic scenarios, kind of like picking uh, paint colors for a wall. And when you have these scenarios, you can build them into computer models, test them, look at the impacts, and based on those impacts and your input, we can build a preferred future scenario. We're going to test these scenarios and we're going to show you the results based on three different computer models, the land use, transportation, and fiscal impact models, all of them using data from the county. So what are the scenarios and how were they developed? Well, we used the input we received from the public meetings, from the citizen surveys, all the input that was gathered in the past few months. And we built two different scenarios. The first one is about what's already happening. It's called the trend. It's a continuation of the present trends in land use and development in the county and seeing what the impacts of those trends over 25 years would be, could be. The second one is based on what we heard. It's called the alternative scenario. And it's a change of policy direction that is guided by the public input and by the five public input priorities or themes that Leanne talked about. Both of these scenarios are tested against a common amount of growth, a common assumption of growth, to see which of these scenario impacts better match what the public's vision is for the future of the county. So talking about the growth control totals, basically, this standard in increment of growth is what we tested. Now you see on this table, currently 2018 from county records, there's about 76,000 people and about 31,000 jobs. We used a projection from the Hampton Roads Transportation Planning Organization, which has a regional model that forecasts potential growth for every county in the region. And their forecast for James City County in the year 2045 was about 120,000 people and about 46,000 jobs. It's important to recognize that these numbers do not represent a goal or a target for growth. They may not happen in 25 years. They may never happen. What they are is just a standard increment of growth 
to allow this scientific testing of alternative policies and build into the model to see what the impacts would be under these possible future conditions. So how did we test the scenarios? The five public input themes were a governing principle for testing these. And the three land, the land use, transportation, and fiscal computer models tested against all five of these public input themes. And the results we'll share with you in a few moments. Before we do that, though, take a step back to remind you of some of the themes from the public input we received. So in 2019, there was a representative survey of over 1,000 county residents chosen at random. And some of the, th the input that we received are relevant to what we're talking about for the future alternatives for the county. So this shows a particularly interesting statistic about what we call a satisfaction gap. Basically, it's the difference between how important an issue was and how satisfied people were with how we've achieved, how we've uh, uh, prog progressed on that issue. So for example, affordable housing, 83% of people thought it was important, but only 50% of people thought that they were satisfied with how we were doing in affordable housing in the county. That leads to a 33% satisfaction gap on that issue. Some of the other issues that had this satisfaction gap, roads and highways, 24%, attracting jobs and businesses, 20%, preserving rural character, 16%, and protecting the environment, 15%. So these are important things to keep in mind, not only as we look at these scenarios, but as we build the future comprehensive plan for the county. This was also from that citizen survey, and this relates to opinions about development. So you can see on the left, opinions on the amounts of development, whether it was residential, office, retail, or industrial, there's an overwhelming majority of people who said that the amount of development is about right or too high. Really a, a very small minority in most cases thought that the amount of development was too low. On the right, concerns or agreements about development issues. So 79% of people thought that developers should pay fees to offset public costs. 79% thought, thought that farmland was more important than development. 75% thought that residential development was too fast. And 59% thought it was better to have small scale retail or offices in neighborhoods. So these are important kind of uh, reminders of the input we've received to date. And what we're really asking for you tonight and in the coming weeks is to, first of all, listen to the presentation. We're going to show you how these computer models played out in the scenarios, weigh the results carefully, and most importantly, we're going to answer whatever questions we can tonight, but most importantly, there are online questionnaires, and we want you to respond thoughtfully to these questionnaires. In these times of public health crisis, this is really our primary way of getting input from you and Leanne is going to go over uh, in a little bit how these questionnaires will work and how we will get your input. And the more input we get, the better foundation we have for building this comprehensive plan based on what we heard. Now, how will your results be used? So the results from these online questionnaires are part of this public review and input. And whatever scenario kind of gets the most votes or the, the most support, it doesn't automatically become the new comprehensive plan or the preferred scenario. What happens is your input will be used to build a refined goals and policies framework that really is the foundation for this new comprehensive plan. Out of that new framework will come the new land use plan, the new comprehensive plan that will be implemented in the coming months and years. And a special feature or benefit of this process is these computer models will be left for the county staff to use after the consultants are done with their process to be able to do ongoing day-to-day -day planning and understand the impacts of growth and development on things like schools, fire stations, parks, and do that kind of modeling in the future. So what is the basic question that we're testing in these scenario planning processes? The question is, what are the implications of different land use and related policy directions on the fiscal health, environmental quality, and quality of life in the county over the next 25 years? So to answer that question, we, we looked at data. 
And a couple of important things in the existing data and current conditions for the county. First of all, on the left is a map of the primary service area. Primary service area, and shown in yellow here, is the area that is targeted for growth. It's the area with public utilities, water and sewer, and it's where most of the growth in the county has been going. The green area is also called the rural lands, and it's not targeted for growth or public utility extensions. Now on the right is a map of what growth has already occurred. So the areas in gray are parcels with some development, not necessarily built out, but not vacant, some development. And you can see that a large proportion of the primary service area is already built out or developed, and a fair amount of the rural lands has also been developed. So this is important background that was used when we started allocating new potential growth using the computer models. Now I'm going to show you some maps of how these computer models played out in the county. These you will, um, first of all, these are complicated maps. We're not gonna go over everything in them, but you will have an opportunity with the online questionnaire to zoom into these maps, to study them at your leisure, and to understand more about what the models are showing for different patterns of growth. I just want to go over some high-level kind of uh, issue points here to help you understand what you might be looking at in the questionnaire. So these are the two scenarios modeling the same increment of growth. On the left is scenario A trend, right is scenario B alternative. What's in the red lines is the primary service area. The green area is the rural lands. And these are dot maps. So every dot on this map represents a person or a job. The gray areas are existing people or jobs, and the colored dots are the new growth that was modeled in the computers. Um, and there's a key, you'll see if you zoom in on the questionnaire, that the colors of the dots, so the green is rural residential, the yellow is low density residential, brown medium, high, medium or high residential, uh, red is commercial, purple industrial, blue mixed use, and blue green public institutional and other. And the basic pattern you'll see here is that there is generally a more dispersed pattern of growth in scenario A than in scenario B. Scenario A calls for a continuation of existing trends. Um, and scenario B calls for some of these public, prior, public input priorities of preserving more natural areas and open space, providing more opportunities for affordable housing, more economic development, higher quality of life. And one of the things you'll notice in scenario B is that the growth is less dispersed. The colored dots are less dispersed, they're more concentrated or compact. So you'll be able to study these more in your online questionnaire, but I just want to show some detail maps of what you'll be seeing when you zoom in. Scenario A is on the left, B on the right. And what you see on the left here is this red line is that primary service area line. So the area on the left is the rural lands. You can see a fair amount of these green dots, new people or jobs in the rural lands. On the right, in the primary service area, you see a pattern of more dispersed single-family lots or detached residential, which are the yellow dots, and more dispersed kind of retail commercial developments, these small red dot areas, and not much multifamily attached units or mixed use. On the right, by contrast, in scenario B, the rural lands has a good bit less of the rural land, people or jobs in the rural lands. It's not showing any of the single family development. That doesn't mean it wasn't in there. It's just that this particular zoom in doesn't show it, but it does show some concentrated areas of medium to higher density residential growth. And a lot of the growth in this scenario, honestly, is in mixed use areas. So the blue areas here. And the charts on the bottom show you how much of the different place types was allocated in each scenario. So the same amount of growth allocated in different place types. You can see that single family residential, detached residential is much higher in scenario A than in B. The mixed use is much higher in scenario B than in A. So this is the maps. 
Now, there are several ways of looking at these scenarios, and this is a screenshot of what you will see when you click on the link for this Alternative Futures Survey. This is a very interactive program called MetroQuest that allows you to see these scenarios in terms of maps, images, and numbers. And that's what each of these colored tabs or panels you'll see here. And under each, and I'm going to walk through these and show you kind of a preview of what you'll be looking at. But under each one of these, you'll be asked to rate each scenario on a one to five star system based on how closely it matches your vision of what the county should be in the future. And very importantly, there's a tell us why button so that we'll not only get this quantitative information, but also you'll be able to give us some qualitative information on why you think one scenario is better than the other. So I'm going to walk through, you just saw the maps, I'm going to walk through the numbers and the images. And on the questionnaire, those are separate panels for images and for numbers. What we've done is combine them here. So we'll walk through images and numbers for the scenarios. And these are really um, what you'll be asked to rate or vote on in the questionnaire. There are five public input themes. There are five slides I'm going to show you, one for each public input theme. So first is nature and environment. And you see on the left some images of what scenario A or the trend could look like. Scenario A is based on more single family detached housing on larger lots. So a large proportion of the landscape or the land is in these large lots. You can see the image of houses fronting a golf course, for example. Whereas scenario B has a variety of housing types from single family lot, detached lots to attached housing, townhouses, condominiums, multifamily. But it also has more areas of protected or preserved open space. So the development in general is more compact and there are more natural areas preserved in B than in A. And then on the right here, you see some of the results of that computer testing. So some of the measures for nature and environment include total acres of land. You can see that A has a lot more land developed, total acres of developed land, 2,300 acres versus 1,800 acres on B. There's an impact on air quality from the traffic. So scenario A has slightly more tons of carbon dioxide emissions than scenario B. And then there's a metric of how many acres of land is developed close to environmentally sensitive areas based on county data. You can see that scenario A has more acres of land that is close to environmentally sensitive areas than B. So that's nature and environment. The second theme is community character. And first of all, the images on the left, you can see that scenario A is your more classic pattern of a single family subdivision with a separate shopping area, retail that is separate. You generally have to get in your car to do your shopping. Uh, the, the image on the bottom shows that these are fairly large lots, don't tend to have sidewalks. Um, pretty much uh, you have to drive to get to places. Scenario B is a different pattern based on compact walkable communities. So you can see there are small lot singles, there's townhouses, there are condominiums and apartments, but the shopping areas are integrated in with the residential areas in a kind of more walkable Main Street community with sidewalks and landscaping and things. And then when we looked at how these, measure, how these uh, different scenarios measured on community character impacts, so on the left here, we have the total number of developed parcels that are located near scenic or historic resources from county data. You can see that B actually has more uh, parcels developed that are near scenic or historic resources than A. A big difference in the average density. So you can see this is the average density or people per acre in the residential portions. A has only 0.21 people per acre. B has 1.74 people per acre. Again, that's not the, across the whole county because the population is the same for A and B. It's just within the residential areas how relatively many people per acre you have in them. And then on the right, there's a chart of the transportation impact. So as I mentioned, there was a transportation model. 
And this looks at how many additional minutes of travel time you would have by car in A or B. So there's more population, more jobs. You're going to have more travel time to get to places. Uh, and this shows the, the chart on the left is peak period, which is rush hour, basically, from getting from your home to your work. And the chart on the right is off-peak, or non-rush hour. And you can see that A has significantly more travel time, 13.9 minutes versus 11.4 minutes in rush hour to get from home to work um, than scenario B. So those are some metrics on community character. The third issue, public input issue, that we looked at was affordable housing. Now, this scenario really couldn't look, this model really couldn't look at what are people earning and what are the price of houses because we can't predict that in 25 years. But it did look from a land use perspective at which scenario would be more feasible to provide affordable housing. So under scenario A, you see the image on the left. Scenario A, as you recall, is primarily single family lots. So the opportunities for affordable housing would be dictated by the price point of those single family houses. Scenario B, though, has a lot more variety of housing types, the attached units, the, the small lot singles, the uh, multifamily units, um, and would have more relatively opportunities, at least, for, for affordable housing. The measures on, that you see on the right, on the left, most chart, it says the total population in attached and multifamily housing is almost twice as much in B than in A. Again, it doesn't mean that we have that much affordable housing, but at least there is the opportunity for affordable housing with these different housing types. Uh, in the middle, there's the number of new dwelling units that are located within existing communities. Again, that uh, creates some opportunities for affordable housing because these tend to be lower cost than developing in uh, areas that are outside of existing communities. Scenario B is higher than scenario A. And on the right is the number of new dwelling units located close to bus lines or walking networks. And that tends to be an important issue for affordable housing and being close to these alternatives to driving your car. The fourth public input theme is economic development. So on the left, some images of the trend scenario shows this pattern of a lot of new kind of jobs would be in retail, um, whether they're small community centers or large big, bo big box centers. The primary kind of economic development is the current patterns of dispersed retail and industrial. On the right, scenario B envisions more of these mixed use place types with jobs being combined in communities with residential areas. So you have things like housing on top of shopping areas. You have things like town centers uh, where there's offices above retail. You have things like Main Street developments um, that will integrate housing with new employment. And the measures on the right, so the chart on the left says the percent of new jobs that are located in these mixed use centers basically commercial and residential developments, quite a bit more in B than in A. And on the right is the net fiscal impact. I mentioned that there was a fiscal impact model. So it looked at what is the net impact over 25 years, basically the difference between revenues and costs to the county for each scenario. And you can see that they both have a positive fiscal impact. Scenario A has a slightly higher impact of about $24 million versus $18 million for scenario B. A couple of more charts on the fiscal impact. This just shows how that plays out over time. You can see in the first few years, first seven years or so, there's actually a negative fiscal balance as you're building the capital facilities, schools, and things that you need. And then the revenues start coming in, and both scenarios end up in positive territory, with scenario A being slightly better than scenario B. This chart just shows the difference between capital and operating ex expenses. So the dark areas are, the dark colors are the capital expenses, the schools, fire stations, parks you need to build. The lighter colors are the operating expenses to operate those schools and things. And you can see, again, both are positive, but uh, you can see the difference between capital and operating expenses. So that's economic development. And then the last one, number five, 
is quality of life. And what we looked at here were things like the access to parks and amenities and the way we get around transportation-wise. Scenario A preserves the current kind of pattern of larger regional parks that have a lot of facilities within them that you primarily drive to. Scenario B includes not only the, the larger regional parks, but also a series of community parks, smaller kind of pocket parks integrated into communities, and more opportunities for alternative transportation, walking paths, bike trails, uh, better access to transit and buses. And here's some of the quality of life measures. So the average distance of new development to existing parks, interestingly enough, is about the same for both scenarios. Again, this is existing parks, not the future parks that might be created. The average distance of new development to existing bus lines. So scenario B is much closer to existing bus lines than scenario A, better access to them. And then that transportation model on the right looked at the total delay for car trips countywide. So this is the additional amount of delay, driving in congested conditions, if you will, that we'll have under scenario A versus B. You can see that scenario A has significantly more delay than scenario B in the future. So that is a snapshot of the metrics and the look and feel of each scenario. But again, we encourage you to study these more deeply on the online questionnaire and tell us why you like one scenario versus the other. We want to close with some thoughts about uh, what the summary conclusions are from the scenario testing. And these are, keep in mind, our conclusions, the planning teams. You will draw your own conclusions. But just to leave you with some thoughts. So scenario B has more results, understandably, that conform to the public input received for the preferred vision or direction for the county. And that's understandable because scenario B was designed specifically to reflect that preferred vision that we heard from the public input. However, scenario A has a higher value of revenues to costs in 25 years, in other words, a more fiscal benefit, although both scenarios have a positive fiscal benefit. One of the reasons for that, uh, as we understand it, is that Scenario A has a larger proportion of its development in single-family houses. Those have a good price point in James City County, typically relative to other communities. They don't have as much of a demand for schools necessarily because of the demographics. So we think that's what's giving you the higher positive fiscal benefit uh, in Scenario A versus Scenario B, which has more diversity of housing types. Uh, number three, the growth in Scenario B is geared more towards higher density housing and mixed-use development than in Scenario A, as you saw in the, in the uh, measures and as you'll see in the questionnaire. Number four, Scenario B has generally better environmental protection, affordable housing feasibility or opportunities, and less traffic impacts than Scenario A. And number five, both scenarios have relatively equal access to existing facilities or amenities in the county, schools, fire stations, parks. However, scenario B has a more compact growth pattern, so that may allow future facilities, schools, parks, et cetera, to be located more efficiently and be less dispersed in the county. So those are just some of our thoughts on our scenario testing. So we will ask you to fill out this questionnaire and we will ask you to uh, make sure you submit your questions. Uh, Leanne, again, is going to go over a little more detail what this looks like online. But this is going to be a very important part of your input that will help us build the foundation for this comprehensive plan, as I mentioned. So what we need from you is not only to weigh these and rate these scenarios, but also click that Tell Us Why button and give us some of that qualitative input about what you like about one scenario versus the other. So that was a lot of information. Uh, we look forward to answering any questions you may have. And I'm going to turn it back to Alex, who will moderate the question and answer period. Thank you, Vlad. Appreciate all of that information. Give you a second. <laughs> um, first question we got uh, from the public uh, was, from, um, was from Jeff. And uh, I'll pose it to Tammy. Um, does the comprehensive plan affect uh, cell towers and develop? How, how does it affect uh, cell towers and development in general? 
Great, uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, this is a good question to uh, help us think about what the comprehensive plan can and can't do, uh, where its focus is and where its focus isn't. Uh, so the comprehensive plan can't dictate uh, private sector decisions about providing cell coverage in certain parts of the county. Uh, you know, that there's a lot of decisions that the private sector makes about exactly where to place something uh, depending on uh, what their coverage maps are and uh, what they can negotiate with property owners. But the comprehensive plan uh, can express, send a message about what the public wants. And uh, that's not only true for cell towers, but also for development in general. So as an aspirational document, it can aspire to have good coverage throughout the county. It can aspire to allow new technologies, uh, which will allow um, coverage while also protecting certain areas that citizens say are important to protect. Uh, it can set policies uh, regarding adjusting the zoning ordinance uh, to accommodate the new technology. It can set a work program uh, to adjust the zoning ordinance to en encourage camouflage towers uh, in areas where uh, we might have highly visible uh, locations that are important to protect. The comprehensive plan can also guide growth uh, where it should go and where it should not go uh, based on what the public has told us and based on our other public input priorities. So um, staff, the planning commission and the board of supervisors and private companies would look to our land use map to decide uh, where to uh, place development. We'd use that for development that comes in for just administrative review. Uh, we'd be gauging it against the zoning ordinance. Um, we'd also be using the comprehensive plan when developments need special permission. And so uh, ultimately the board of supervisors would make those decisions. So I hope that helps the listener, uh, the viewer understand uh, what the role of the comprehensive plan is in that and how we might be able to ultimately uh, send some messaging to private companies about James City County's desires for uh, cell phone coverage or development in general. Great. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, one additional question for you, Tammy. Um, why, why are we updating the comprehensive plan? Uh, what is the, you know, what's the reason for do, going through this process? Thank you. Uh, the comprehensive plan is a document that looks 20 to 25 years out into the future. Um, but we do want to uh, reassess it every five years. And in James City County, uh, we ultimately end up updating it every five years because we know that the community has changed over that time. Uh, we have new people who come into our community. Uh, people change opinions. The conditions on the ground change. Uh, we review uh, various statistics that tell us how it's changed over time. And ultimately, we want to refresh it so that it's the most relevant document uh, to achieve the vision that com the community's expressed. So the uh, James City County as an organization, uh, the Board of Supervisors, the Planning Commission, the staff, the citizens, put a lot of energy into doing that uh, every five years. Great. Thank you, Tammy. And then uh, just one for Leanne. Um, how does the comprehensive plan relate to the strategic plan? Great question, Alex. So um, James City County just adopted the, its first strategic plan just a few years ago. And in that plan, there is a process identified for how it relates to the comprehensive plan. Um, there's a great graphic in that document. It's, I like to call it the planning wheel. Um, and it identifies the relationship between the comprehensive plan, departmental plans, and the strategic plan. So essentially, I'll start with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan, is, as Tammy just mentioned, is a long-range planning document that looks out 20 years from today. Um, it sets the course for the vision for the future and the different goals and strategies and actions that the county is going to undertake to achieve that vision. The strategic plan, uh, which will be updated most likely on the heels of this, at least that's how it's um, set out in the strategic plan, is to be updated once the comprehensive plan has been updated to reflect those long-range goals in the comprehensive plan. 
Uh, the strategic plan is a shorter term document. It focuses on kind of the next five years, and it's more of an, uh, a guidance document for the county, um, the Board of Supervisors and staff, um, and the county's administration to think about the different operational initiatives and capital investments that need to be undertaken to achieve the goals of the comprehensive plan. And so it, it's, it's more strategic and what it focuses on, and it's also focused on um, kind of the, what, what's um, possible to fund within that time frame and organizes some of these kind of strategies and actions in buckets. The, comp, the strategic plan as it's developed right now focuses again on the first five years, but then it also looks to medium and long term. So it looks at kind of the whole range of things that the county to achieve its vision for the currently adopted comprehensive plan um, and uh, prioritizes those based on a lot of different things, the public's input and what's what the priorities are for implementation and the resources available to implement those items. So it's a cycle where the comprehensive plan sets the long range vision and the strategic plan really focuses on how to incrementally implement that vision over time. Great, uh, thank you, Leanne. Um, just uh, one or two more questions before we move on to the next section. Um, uh, this one's going to be for Vlad. Uh, Sharon asked uh, online um, whether this is a binary choice of A or B, uh, or is can there be some blend, or you know, um, you know, do you need to choose one or the other? Great question. So you will see in the questionnaire that there are only two alternatives, um, and and we did that because really the we were building this on public input, and the public input focused on what things were like right now, what trends were right now, and what their alternative vision was for the future. So we didn't really have necessarily a basis for a third scenario other than what we heard from the public. Uh, so there are kind of those two choices in the questionnaire, but that does not mean that those are the only choices, as I mentioned, uh, picking one of those or whichever one is, is higher rated does not automatically become the county's future comprehensive plan. This is what we like to call a data-guided process, not a data-driven process, so that these scenarios and your input and your votes will be used to inform this uh, pol new policies, goals, strategies, and actions for the future. And then out of that will come a typically a some kind of different hybrid alternative uh, scenario that takes the elements of what people said they liked most from this questionnaire and builds a preferred scenario out of that. And then we'll also have, um, as I mentioned, the computer models will build that preferred future scenario, leave that with the county, and the county can use that to test the impacts of future development proposals, uh, planning for public facilities, and they'll basically have this uh, virtual digital architecture of the county that they can plug into different scenarios to test planning alternatives in the future. Great, Vlad. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to kick it back to Leanne. Um, we do have some great questions rolling in, but I want to save some of them for our next uh, question answer session in a few minutes. Great. Thanks, Alex. Um, so now we're going to um, move on to the next focus for the um, exploring and testing phase, uh, this round two of Engage 2045, where we're looking at updating James City County's comprehensive plan goals. Um, as I mentioned earlier, James City County has a currently adopted comprehensive plan, and the name of that is Toward 2035 Leading the Way. And we are updating that through this Engage 2045 planning process. Um, the current plans framework includes a community-wide vision, a series of goals, strategies, and actions that we are going to be updating through this process. The vision for the new plan, the 2045 plan, will articulate the highest level of aspiration for the community. Goals will identify the specific outcomes to achieve, Strategies will identify the direction the county will take to achieve the goals, and actions will outline the specific implementation steps to achieve the plan's vision and goals. During this round of engagement, we want to focus on the current plan's goals 
and how they should be updated to better reflect the, com the five community priorities we've been discussing tonight. The TOR 2035 plan includes eight goals that address community character, land use, environment, economic development, housing, parks and recreation, public facilities, and population needs. To the, develop the goals for the new 2045 plan, we first want to evaluate the currently adopted goals and compare them to the public input priorities identified during this first round of engagement. After this webinar, you're gonna be given the opportunity to review each of the currently adopted plan goals in the 2035 plan and consider how they relate to the public input priorities identified in the process. Here you see a matrix that's um, included in the questionnaire, and I'll go over this in a little more detail shortly, that compares the 2035 comprehensive plan goals to those 2045 public input priorities. Throughout the online questionnaire, you're gonna be asked if each of the goals should be maintained, changed, or eliminated. After we have another brief question and answer break, I'm gonna explain more about where to access this questionnaire and how to complete it. These responses to the questions will be evaluated and summarized and ultimately are going to guide development of the new comprehensive plan goals. And now I'm gonna hand the mic back over to Alex to share some questions from viewers. Great, uh, thank you, Leanne. Um, the first question uh, that I'd like to uh, dive into uh, for Tammy real quick is, um, if, comprehensive, if the comprehensive plan shapes strategic plan, then the alternative transportation objectives, objectives should be spelled out. How does James City County view alternative transportation options? Thank you, Alex. Um, it's a good question, uh, and I think it might have a two-part answer. So I'll uh, lead from the perspective of what the comprehensive plan covers in terms of transportation and its goals, strategies, and actions, and how that's articulated in the strategic plan ultimately. And then I'll ask Vlad to uh, weigh in with any uh, relevance to the scenario modeling. The comprehensive plan uh, is a comprehensive look at transportation. Uh, we look at it in a multimodal way, that is, uh, with a lot of emphasis on our road network, but we also uh, cover and have plans for our bicycle uh, infrastructure and our pedestrian connectivity, uh, as well as rail and um, our, our air coverage. We try to cover every component of transportation, uh, WADA, our public transport. And we have goals, strategies, and actions for each of those. And we also articulate uh, what sort of projects we might be pursuing in the future. And I think that draws a direct relationship to our strategic plan uh, because our strategic plan calls out specific high priority transportation projects that we are going to pursue as a county. Now we know that we can't finance all of those projects on our own. Uh, we do. Um, Fortunately, I uh, have resources to allocate a certain amount of our capital improvement program uh, to a matching transportation fund. And so citizen input might help us understand uh, how we want to prioritize that CIP funding and uh, give direction to staff as to which projects and which types of projects, that is roads, uh, bicycle, pedestrian, et cetera, projects to pursue. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that, uh, you know, it's not uh, an instance where we might have standalone, uh, all standalone projects. It's an either or. It may be uh, complementary. And so, uh, in the instance of several recent projects, based upon citizen input, uh, we've understood that uh, the widening of Long Hill Road, uh, for instance, or some improvements down on Pocahontas Trail that we would heavily blend in uh, bicycle and pedestrian access along with the trans road transportation project that we're looking to uh, improve. Just to add to what Tammy was saying, um, there's two, I think, benefits to this, from this project to transportation planning in the future in the county. First of all, 
we will now have a transportation model customized to the county. And I showed some general statistics of what it does in terms of delay or, or how long it takes to get places. But this is a detailed model that will allow you to analyze the impacts on any major roadway in the county. Um, and this, this will give the county the opportunity to plug in different road improvement projects and see how they play against future anticipated development or against alternative development approaches like in the scenarios. So one is you will have this model that will allow much more sophisticated kind of analysis of what's going on with transportation. But secondly, from a policy standpoint, what we hear in your input and the overall input for this process, uh, as you know, development directs transportation or influences transportation very directly. So what we hear in terms of the pattern of where growth should go, the type of growth, the, the place types, if they are more compact communities that might have uh, more internal trips versus more dispersed areas that put more load on the regional roadways and things, um, that will influence the policy direction for transportation and the types of projects that might be proposed. And of course, uh, as I showed in the kind of uh, scenario B that has more alternative transportation options, bicycle, walking, transit, uh, that's a policy decision that could influence the types of projects that become proposed or funded in the future uh, through the comprehensive plan. So I'm not sure if I got all the nuance of that question, because I honestly forgot exactly what was asked. But uh, let me know if, if I didn't quite get it there. OK, and we'll, we'll definitely rely on the comments to see if there are any follow-ups. <laughs> um, one additional uh, one for Tammy. Um, Catherine asked, uh, scenario B allows for more alternative transportation possibilities. Are you considering expansion of the Virginia Capitol Trail through the county into Williamsburg. And this one also relates to another comment that uh, we received about uh, quality of life uh, from Richard uh, that talks about uh, health and wellness and uh, future investment in outdoor um, uh, facilities. Thank you uh, to both of the participants for asking those questions. Um, you know, certainly uh, we believe in public engagement, citizen engagement. Um, and invest very heavily in it during our comprehensive plan updates, but those aren't our only opportunities for citizen engagement. And so we have heard uh, in between comprehensive plans some real interest in what's called the birthplace of America Trail or the expansion of the Capitol Trail. And so that is an exciting new uh, idea and option that's come up since the last comprehensive plan. And so uh, if there's particular support for that, uh, we'd love to hear it during the comprehensive plan. It is something that uh, has already uh, made its way into uh, the Hampton Roads Transportation Planning Organization's uh, long-range transportation planning uh, process. And we'd love to hear more about uh, citizen interest in that uh, for James City County. We know that opportunities like and facilities like the Capitol Trail uh, possible expansions to it, and uh, facilities um, for outdoor recreating uh, have really shown their importance in this time of the pandemic. And so I think we will be listening very carefully to what citizens have to say about uh, any revisions we make to those, uh, any particular changes in direction if we need to uh, enhance those, if we need to add to them, uh, if there are places where we need to um, make access more equitable. So those are all things I think that we'll be uh, listening to now, but also as we get further along in the process and think about more specific concrete actions that we'll be taking. Great, thank you, Tammy. Uh, one last question for Leanne. Um, how did the input from the first public engagement process get folded into the goals and alternative scenarios? So uh, the goals have not been developed yet for the 2045 plan. That's actually part of what we're going to be testing through this next round of engagement. So the, the five public input priorities that we've mentioned a few times tonight 
Um, those are really the guidance for how we're evaluating the current comprehensive plan goals that was, that plan was adopted back in 2015. So this is our first stage to really start talking about the goals and how they relate to that, to the inputs that we received um, from the first round of engagement last November and December. Um, in terms of the scenario planning, and Vlad, I'll let you, if you want to add a little bit to this, I'll feel free to do so. Um, the idea is that the alternative scenario was really developed with those five public input priorities in mind and how an alternative to what's happening today in, in the, the trend scenario, scenario A, how that could be different if we really focused on those five um, priorities. Again, we're using those priorities, to, those five input priorities to evaluate both trends and looking at how well both scenarios achieve those. Anything else you want to add to that, Vlad? No, I think just to reiterate that they were not only used, the public input was not only used to um, build the scenarios, but it was also used to test the scenarios, as you saw in the questionnaire. The, those five themes are the, the filters, the lenses with which we developed performance metrics, and um, we kind of shared what this, each scenario could look and feel like on the questionnaire. And just one other quick reiteration. I know it can be a little bit confusing because you have a currently adopted plan with goals and we're developing a new plan with goals. So just wanted to confirm that the 2035 uh, plan, again, was adopted back in 2015. And we are starting with those goals as a basis for updating and creating the goals for the new plan. So that's, again, what we're focused, the second area of focus in this current um, phase of engagement. Great. Uh, thank you all for your answers. I'll kick it back to Leanne. Great. Thank you so much. So we're going to spend a little bit of time now actually um, talking about the virtual assembly public input instructions, so the two questionnaires. Um, and Alex, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the website here, we're going to walk you through how to do this. Um, before we kind of jump into the website, I did want to mention, um, so the, the main way, the, the really the only the way that we're requesting inputs through this process is through these two questionnaires that are available online. That being said, if you have difficulty accessing online or, or, or have some challenge, um, please feel free to contact staff to receive some assistance and maybe an alternate way to provide input on these two questionnaires. And again, the phone number you can call is 757-253-6685. You can also email planning, P-L-A-N-N-I-N-G, at jamescitycountyva.gov. Um, they will be glad to help you with um, um, getting your questionnaire filled out in whatever way suits you the best. Um, for those that have the ability to go online, um, you should see the, the Google page here in front of you. And what we're going to encourage you to do is to type in jamescitycountyva.gov slash engage2045. That's how you're going to get to the, um, the page for um, engage2045. And then you'll see over here on the right side of the page, there's a pop-up window. And this is where you want to go to get to the virtual assembly online page. You'll see some instructions here about joining the assembly that's going on right now. Um, and then the questionnaires that are going to be available tonight through September 2nd. So September 2nd is kind of the, the targets you want to get your questionnaire fill, questionnaires filled in by. So if you go to this link right here, um, and that's actually, we've got it listed up here in this other tab, just so we got a quick clip here. Um, you'll land on this page, page, the Exploring Our Future Alternatives Assembly Instructions and Questionnaire. And you can find everything you need on this page. Um, I'm going to walk you through and just show you the highlights of what's on here. Two things I want to mention that you won't see today that you will see in the future. One is there will be a link to this virtual assembly. So there'll be a video clip for folks that want to watch this that maybe weren't able to watch it tonight. That will be available for them to watch in the future. There will also be a written document um, of the Q&A discussion. So any questions that we don't get to tonight, uh, we will um, have written um, reactions to those. Those two things will be available on this website. So there's a little bit of just kind of introductory information about this phase of engagement and what we're undertaking. 
um, and the different ways to participate. Again, there's a reminder of the, the, the time frame within which you can participate, that deadline of September 2nd, and then the information about how you can get some assistance um, participating if the online options are maybe not working for you. Um, there are some questionnaire instructions. Again, it's important to remember there are two questionnaires that we're asking you to completely fill out. One is the Establishing Our Goals questionnaire, and the second is the Exploring Our Future Alternatives questionnaire. And so there's information here about um, those two questionnaires. And then there's some more specific instructions about how to do that. Um, and the two links to the two questionnaires, again, some more contact information. Uh, just a little bit more information here. There is a link to a podcast and a couple of background videos that might be helpful for you to peruse as well. Um, okay, so we're going to walk through the questionnaires. If you click on this link here, the, and it doesn't matter which of the questionnaires you complete first, so you're welcome to do them in either order, whatever works best for you, but we do encourage you to complete both questionnaires. Um, I'm going to, instead of clicking on that link, I'm going to come up here to my quick tab, which pulls up the, the questionnaire. So this is the Establishing Goals for our 2045 Comprehensive Plan Questionnaire. And you can see here there's some introductory information about what we're wanting you to do and looking at the public and priorities and how they might influence changing the currently adopted comprehensive plan goals. This is that matrix that I showed you earlier in the presentation. And then some brief instructions for the questionnaire that you can read. And then you'll click on the next button. And what you'll find here is that the questionnaire is set out, um, the first several questions, the first nine, are set out by um, the five public input priorities. So um, this first one here is nature. You'll see here that it has the full public input priority, um, the text of that priority statement. And then below it, you'll see it has the goal from the currently adopted comprehensive plan, the environment goal, that, re that relates to that nature statement. And you're um, asked the question, considering the nature of public input priority, should the 2035 environment goal stay the same or be changed? And you're given uh, four answer choices here to select from. And I'm just gonna show you how each of these works. So the first option is do not change the goal, it works. You hit next, we'll go to the next question. This is community character. You'll see the input priority and the related goal. If you decide you think the goal should change and you click the change the goal option, it will give you this pop-up box which allows you to write in the specific change. You can see it says, please include a description of the change in the space below. That's where you would write in. We're just gonna write test for tonight so we know it's not real data going in. Um, but this is where you write what you would like that change to be for that goal. Uh, another example, so we got the affordable housing one, no opinion is one option you can select. Uh, for economic development, I'm going to select the final option here, I don't think this topic needs a goal. And then finally, our quality of life, which actually has five different questions because there are five comprehensive plan goals that relate to the quality of life public input priority. So I'm just going to see if I can get my mouse up here, there we go. I'm just going to press the first one on each of these so we can move on to the next round of questions. You want to make sure and click all of those. And by the way, you have to click an answer on each of these or it will not let you continue to the next page. So that's really important. All right. Once you've gone through all of those goals, there's another question related to the comprehensive plan goals, which is about what's missing. What if any additional priorities or goals would you recommend including in the plan? So if there was something you didn't see in those goals that you would like to see, this is your opportunity to write in that information here. Click next. And then we get um, a series of questions. This is going to be the same series of questions that you see in the scenario questionnaire. That's a little bit of information about you, the responder. How long you've lived in James City County. I'm just gonna select the first one for each of these. What's your age? Um, the census category closest to your race, uh, your ethnicity, your gender, and if you've participated in one of the county's planning processes before. And most importantly, after you plug in all of that, make sure you hit this submit button at the end. That makes sure that 
the information gets plugged in and sent to us, and then we can take that feedback and look at all of the collective feedback and create the themes from that. So um, on the second, um, the Exploring Our Future Alternatives questionnaire, you saw several slides that Vlad had, had in his presentation. You can click on this link here. Um, we actually have it already kind of teed up here, and this is um, an opportunity to show, um, to tell you about a feature uh, uh, that you may or may not know about with your web browser, which is if you want to zoom in and out of something, you can hit Control plus or Control minus um, to enlarge or um, shrink um, your um, website. Or I think so, Command plus or minus on a Mac. <laughs> command plus or minus on or a Or on Mac. your mobile device, you can use your fingers to zoom in, so. That's right, yeah. that's right. Um, when you first jump onto the page, there's going to be a box that tells you a little bit about um, what you're about to um, enter, which is this MetroQuest questionnaire. You can click on the begin, and as you'll see, as Vlad showed, there are five different windows. And as I scroll over these, you see they kind of respond. Um, that's how you can navigate through each of these windows. Again, we want to make sure you go all through all of these windows and complete all of the different questions. I'm going to focus a little bit less on the content th in these and more on um, how the functionality of this works. So this welcome page has uh, some information about the comprehensive plan update process, and it has this kind of banner bar down here. You can actually click on these little buttons here to read some of the background information that fed into the scenario planning process. You can either click on the next bar or the begin button here to move on to the first uh, part of the questionnaire where you'll provide feedback. And on each of these, you're going to get an instructional window that will pop up and give you some instructions for what you want to do. Again, um, you're going to be rating on a one to five scale um, for each of these. And as you see here, this is the look at the maps, the scenario maps that Vlad showed us earlier. Scenario A trend is the first and scenario B alternative is the second. So it's important to look at both of these tabs because you want to be able to, to rank, um, to rate each of these. And again, there's that tell us why button that you can go through and add additional information about why you think that scenario might be rated a certain way. Make sure and click that submit button when you um, enter in that information. Again, if you want to zoom in and out, Vlad mentioned there's the, there are these buttons that allow you to kind of zoom in and out so that you can see specific parts of the map more clearly. And please don't forget to go back up to the scenario B and rate that and tell why you rated that. Um, so you can go to next task or you can click on the actual task bar here. This third one looks at the scenario images. Again, here's your instructional window that tells you um, what you're going to be doing on this page. Uh, the scenario A trend and scenario B alternative, you'll see that on the top of all of these um, three pages, two through four. And here you will see the five public input priorities along the left side here and the, the example illustrations. So what you want to do is you want to click through each of these and identify your preference, um, rate it, you know, one for least preferred and five for most preferred. I'm just putting five on all of these, but you want to make sure and click on every single one of these and rate every single one. Um, and don't forget, oh, obviously the, the tell us why button is available on each of these as well, so that you can go through and identify exactly why you rated those um, images the way that you did. And don't forget to go back up to Scenario B Alternative, the same exact choices, um, but with different um, options listed here. So you have the five public input priorities that you're going to look through, and you're going to rate each of these images using this rate bar. Again, you can tell um, why if you have some specific information you'd like to provide to the project team and the citizen participation team. And then you can move on to the next, which is the Scenario Numbers. Um, these are the numbers that Vlad um, shared with us earlier. Again, the instruction panel here tells us about what we're doing on this page. Um, look, this looks similar to the last one. We got scenario A trend and scenario B alter alternative at the top. And we have the five public input priorities. 
When you're on scenario A trend, you're going to be rating each of these for scenario A. So you will see the comparisons between each, but you're really focusing on scenario A rankings here. Scenario B, you will be rating based on how scenario B performs in this one. And then you can either hit next or next task up here, or you can hit um, the, the um, bar right here to, um, whoops, sorry, next goes through this way. That's another way to navigate. You can either click on these individually again, or you can hit the next button, which will take you to the wrap up page. This is the tell us about yourself. And so these are the exact same questions that we have on the comprehensive plan survey that just gives us some information about you as the respondent to the questionnaire. You'll see those questions listed here. After you complete those, make sure and hit this submit final questions button and you'll get this thanks for your input that lets you know that it was able to move through um, successfully and will be in the database for us to evaluate. Um, so I'll stop there and, and please let us know again through the Facebook comment or through email if you have any questions about how to navigate through this. And um, I'll hand this back over to Alex. Great, thank you, Leanne. Um, first question uh, that I think would be uh, good for Vlad. Um, Will, you, will the preferred scenarios lead to changes to the land use map during this comprehensive plan update? So as I mentioned, the preferred scenario is not necessarily whichever scenario rates the highest in the questionnaire. Uh, whichever scenario rates the highest, as well as all the qualitative tell us why input, will be used to build this new policy framework. Uh, that policy framework is what will be used to create a new future land use map. So. Yes, uh, not directly in the sense that uh, whichever scenario uh, gets the most votes becomes the, the new future land use map, but it will inform these goals and policies for land use, economic development, nature, environment, affordable housing, all those, uh, that will then be used to uh, make changes and refinements to the future land use map from the prior comprehensive plan. Thank you, Vlad. Um, one question for uh, Tammy. Um, what is the role of the community participation team and how does it differ from the Planning Commission Working Group? Question. Uh, you know, we, we are really fortunate uh, to have a dedicated team of citizens uh, to help us through this process, and it's actually two teams. Uh, the first is the community participation team. Uh, we had an application process and many more uh, applicants than we could choose uh, for the committee, but uh, just a really diverse group of folks who have uh, a lot of interest in the future of the county and getting the word out and getting people engaged in it. And uh, this group of 10 people um, have really instructed us through and guided us through all of these different public engagement opportunities, uh, both in terms of designing uh, what we have done this evening and in our past events, but also in uh, how we reach out to the community. Uh, and then a very co important component of their job is in uh, receiving the summaries of the public input and making sure that we are representing that well and passing it forward to our uh, Planning Commission Working Group and our Board of Supervisors. So that gets us to the Planning Commission Working Group. Uh, they are essentially the Planning Commission uh, plus uh, a liaison from the Community Participation Team who reminds the Planning Commission uh, what public input has been along the way. And they are a body uh, that really focuses on the technical review of the comprehensive plan. That is going uh, thoroughly through the plan chapter by chapter, looking at uh, the new information that we have presented, uh, what citizens had to say about the vision for that area, uh, considering any policy changes, considering updates to our goals, strategies, and actions, and uh, what the preferred vision was and how that ultimately, as Vlad mentioned, translates into a policy framework in our new land use map. They have the uh, uh, last word, so to speak, before it goes to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, who will ultimately make the um, final decisions regarding the comprehensive plan. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, one more question for Leanne. 
Um, how are we ensuring that we're hearing from uh, as many citizens as possible? So, uh, really good question, Alex. Um, uh, I'll kind of explain through what we did during round one and talk a little bit about what we're doing in round two. So, um, I, I mentioned earlier that there are several questions about you as a respondent, someone who's filling out a questionnaire. We ask similar questions during the first round of engagement. And what that does is that helps us understand who we're reaching. Um, whether it be geographically or kind of age cohort within the community. Um, it helps us understand um, the diversity of people that we're reaching or the lack of. And that's something that we, um, the citizen participation team in particular, cares very much about. And so we spend, you know, some time assessing that data and looking at where there might be gaps. We compare the representation in the community coming through the engagement process with what census tells us is the representation of the community. And so if we find a gap in a specific group, whether it be an age cohort, race, ethnicity, et cetera, we know that we need to focus in on that group and trying to engage them further. Um, the, the great thing about the last round of engagement in this round is that you know we're starting tonight, but we're continuing to engage through September 2nd. So we're continuing to get feedback through that time, and we can watch the inputs as they come through to understand who we're reaching and if there needs to be um, kind of a further reach out to certain members of the community to try to encourage them to engage, we will do that. The citizen participation team is also very focused, again, on on making sure a diversity of people and a, a good representation of the community is engaged and has developed outreach um, mechanisms to um, try to encourage different members of the community to participate. So I think they've done a very robust job in, in getting the word out and letting people know. Anything else that anyone else like to add to that? Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, one additional uh, question we received uh, from Facebook. Uh, Mike asked, how does uh, James City County's comprehensive plan interact with other agencies such as the National Park Service? Uh, Tammy, would you be able to take that one? Sure. Um, the comprehensive plan provides an opportunity for us to engage with the public very broadly. Uh, so certainly tonight uh, we're reaching out to you, the citizens, uh, for help in understanding uh, where we need to revise the comprehensive plan and uh, change some direction. But uh, our engagement really involves other stakeholders. Uh, earlier in May, we reached out to different organizations uh, throughout the county and invited them to make presentations to the community participation team to understand uh, those organizations' missions and how the comprehensive plan might be able to further those missions. Uh, but we also uh, go beyond organizations and we look to other divisions and agencies uh, to provide us input. Uh, we received input uh, through the Soil and Water Conservation District, for instance, um, during that listening forum. And we engage with uh, the military bases, uh, with the National Park Service, uh, with um, state and federal uh, agencies who might hold land in the county when there are applications uh, near those properties or when there's an item of interest uh, that might affect uh, a section that they might have a particular interest in. Uh, for instance, uh, in developing the environmental chapter of the comprehensive plan, uh, we are partnering with the uh, Stormwater and Resources Protection Division to update that, uh, but we'll also soli solicit opinions and uh, input uh, from the Department of Environmental Quality uh, from the state. Uh, so that's just one way in which we reach out um, throughout the comprehensive plan with a variety of stakeholders. Great, uh, thank you, Tammy. Uh, one additional question uh, we just received in. Uh, Richard was asking, um, was there any benchmarking studies done of other communities um, that we wanted to look at or emulate uh, as far as James City County? And I, I think maybe um, it's talking about, uh, or Richard's talking about uh, in developing the plan, um, you know, from one perspective, did we, uh, maybe Vlad could talk about the Hampton Roads Transportation Organization and the transportation studies uh, that were done regionally, along with Tammy, potentially. Um, and then the interactions, I guess, maybe between the different localities, if Tammy wanted to take that one. Well, I can start. Um, 
Yeah, definitely. The, the, um, there's an opportunity with the scenario planning and any comprehensive plan process to look at kind of what lessons learned there are from other communities. Um, so when we built the uh, place types, those were built based on the Hampton Roads trans Transportation Organization's uh, regional model. Uh, but we calibrated them to James City County kind of uh, uh, conditions. Um, in the policy development, I think uh, because we're not done with this comprehensive plan, we, we're in the scenario planning stage, uh, but when we start building the new policies, that's another opportunity to kind of look at what are the best practices from other communities uh, for things like affordable housing or environmental protection or things like that. You mentioned transportation. Um, Yes, the transportation actually uses the regional model from the Hampton Roads Transportation Planning Organization. It uses the regional model and builds kind of the background traffic uh, off of that to understand what you know conditions are in James City County. But um, I think that the short answer, and Tammy or Leanne might want to add to this, is yes, uh, we've done some in the scenario planning phase, but we are doing um, policy development basically in this next phase and there's uh, plenty more opportunities there to look at lessons learned from other communities. I think I'll just add into what Vlad was saying. Uh, one point about the transportation modeling is that uh, one great benefit of the approach that we're taking with this uh, comprehensive plan is the ability to customize that regional model to James City County conditions and uh, that's been a great addition that um, Michael Baker and Associates and EPR have been able to uh, calibrate for us in this comprehensive plan that will produce, I think, uh, more particular uh, and truer results for James City County. Uh, we also, uh, in the development of each of the chapters, uh, take an opportunity to look at what our neighboring localities are doing. Uh, so we know that uh, the city of Williamsburg and York County are updating their comprehensive plans now, and we're looking to see uh, where we have areas of common interest or where our policies might diverge a bit. And so uh, those are the only two additions uh, I'd make, uh, certainly, as Vlad mentioned, we will be getting much more heavily into policy development and be looking to uh, really see what other localities are doing that uh, we'd like to emulate. If, if you wouldn't mind, I'm just building off of your point, Tammy. I think I would just encourage people that are um, per filling out the questionnaires, if there is a particular policy or project or something from another community that you'd like to emulate or replicate or do something similar to or do something not similar to, in James City County, you're welcome to um, include that information and the options where there's kind of a text box for you to complete that info. That would help the policy drafters understand kind of some of the thinking from the public's perspective about the different types of things you'd like to draw upon from other communities. Wonderful. Uh, thank you all. Um, I will kick it back to Tammy. Uh, that's the end of our question portion. Um, but thank you all so much for participating. Thank you, Alex. Um, as we draw to a close this evening, uh, I want to recall that we noted earlier that the key ingredient to the Engage 2045 success in creating the community you envision is your input. Uh, to do that, we really need you to link to the website jamescitycountyva.gov slash engage2045 after the close of this assembly to complete the two questionnaires. We'll have everything you need there. We'll have detailed instructions, a link to the recorded assembly, links to the questionnaires and helpful videos, as well as the answers to questions that we were not able to get to this evening. If you find that you need help, please don't hesitate to call the planning division at 757-253-6685. Uh, that help might be because you are stuck in a questionnaire and uh, need some additional background information. That help might be that uh, you don't have access to the internet and would like to know where to find a mobile hotspot. Uh, we're partnering with the Williamsburg Regional Library and to make those available to you. It may be that you're watching this on cable TV and you don't have a device. Uh, again, please call the planning division. We've got a plan for that. Uh, we are partnering again with 
Williamsburg Regional Library to have devices at their bookmobile locations. So we have a lot of things that we've taken into consideration uh, in order to make this uh, a good opportunity for you to give us your input and we can uh, help you get through any issues that you might be having. Remember that we're using this input to determine a preferred scenario, to craft new goals toward your vision, to launch ideas for actions and policies to reach those goals. Please share your voice, share your comments, shape our future. And this concludes our virtual assembly. On behalf of the community participation team, the planning team, James City County, thank you for attending. We look forward to hearing your ideas and hopefully seeing you at the next event.